Hey guys, on the last video we unboxed the EG4 6500EX. We kind of messed with that a little bit, went over some features, and yeah, I was super excited to get it, super excited to dip my toes in the 48 volt systems. So now I actually have a proper battery. I'm very excited about it. I don't know if you know what it is yet by looking at the box, but we're gonna open it and I'm gonna show you guys. There's what we got. As you can see, it's an EG4 Cerberac battery. This is their new LL, newest version of their top of the line Cerberac battery. This thing's really heavy. It's heavier than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so like I said, this is EG4's new LL series battery. This is the updated version of their old one. And this is it. This is as best as it gets from as far as signature solar cells, I believe. And yeah, this thing's awesome. It's capable of 100 amps discharge, 5.12 kilowatts, I believe. And it's 5.12 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. It has 100 amp hour cells in it. It has 100 amp EMS. Let's go ahead and kick it on. But as far as uh, 40 volt battery, server rack batteries, this is supposed to be one of the better ones. It actually has built in virus suppression. It's got tons and tons and tons of features. And in the box, you also get this little short cable. I think this is for connecting it to different batteries or maybe the inverter and some short power leads. They're kind of short. I hope I can make these work, but if not, I'll just have to make my own. You get the little instruction book. And then you get this dyno graph that actually shows you the exact capacity they pulled and it was 104.11 amp hours, so that's awesome. We went ahead and flipped the breaker on, now we're gonna push the power button. Dang, that's pretty cool, okay. So brand new right out of the box. So brand new right out of the box, you can see it's sitting at 54%. I'm gonna go ahead and get the plastic off of this. Okay, that was a fail. Anyways, 54%, it's got a little state of charge thing here. It's telling you everything's good. You have an alarm light, you have a reset button. You have these dip switches for connect, depending on what kind of inverter you connect this to, you might have to change these. So let's go through some of the menus, shall we? Okay. There's all your different cell voltages. Pretty cool. This shows you the temperature of everything. I'm not sure what else we can see on this. So yeah, it tells you the voltage of the battery, the percent of charge and the current. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna use this battery in conjunction with the EG4 inverter. So next I gotta get it over there to the cart. I don't know how I'm gonna mount this yet. I don't know if you can stand these up or not and if it'll hurt it, but I guess I'll kind of look into that. But for right now, I'll probably just stand it straight up, connect it to the inverter, plug in the ethernet cable and kind of get all the settings set up and getting this thing running. And then we're gonna kind of go from there. So Signature Solar is where I bought this from. They rate this battery at 7,000 cycles and 15 to 20 years service life. So that's, that's awesome. You buy it once, it's got all the best features, all the best BMSs and all that good stuff in it. It's kind of expensive, but at the same time, when you're looking at 48 volt batteries, even to build your own battery, you're getting close to that price range anyways, you know, without an enclosure, without a good BMS and all that. So we're still gonna build our own 48 volt battery, but I really wanted to have a nice one just to have a good benchmark of performance and all that good stuff. I mean, you can literally hook this up, plug and play with any of their inverters or any other inverters really. And it should work really well. It should be very reliable, very safe. You know, that's all the things you kind of want to look for. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing hooked up. We're gonna plug it into the inverter and kind of mess with the settings and see how it works. All right, I went ahead and installed my, ignore that. I went ahead and installed my power in. I'm just using an Anderson connector just for testing purposes. So we got those inputs connected. I'm going to throw this panel back on. I still need to wire the AC in for the charging function. I've not done that yet, but we're gonna do that in the future. Okay, so we have the battery connected to our inverter. As you can see, everything's working so far. I didn't hook it up backwards, so that's good. I need to strip all this down, so that's probably gonna be my next project and just kind of get all this generally cleaned up. I want this system to look really good and professional, so I'm happy I'm gotten this far. And that's it, I guess the next stage is we need to fully charge this thing and start using it. So 
I'm definitely gonna keep making videos as I learn more about these two units and how they can work together. So I'm excited to learn that. And I think I said in the last video, I have raw cells coming. So we're gonna do a 48 volt raw cell build as well to go in conjunction with this. That way I have around 13 to 14 kilowatt hours, 48 volt just for this setup. So, and like I said, this setup is gonna be for our higher wattage loads, mainly the mini split. And the 12 volt system is gonna be for everything else. So very exciting, it's gonna be super cool. Oh no. All right guys, so here's kind of the final first build of the EG4 system, 48 volt. It's very sloppy right now. This is just temporary for now, just so I can kind of mess with the system and use it a little bit while I come up with a better mounting scheme. So we got the battery with a, just a strap around it. The inverter is mounted. We got the grid input right there. We have the inverter output right there with a kilowatt hour meter, so that's awesome. And we have one string of PV input. I'm gonna add a second one. That way I can have both of them working. Like I said, I wanna really design a really nice cart to put all this on. I don't know if you can stand these batteries up I don't know if that's gonna hurt the battery or not. I don't know if there's any like electrolyte that's gonna slosh around. It's lithium iron phosphate. I know some of them do, some of them don't. It really just depends on the cell, I guess, but we're just gonna leave it like this just for now. And that's it. I'm just gonna start using this thing and I'm gonna update you guys as I learn and make changes to the whole system and keep showing you guys the progress. I appreciate you guys watching. Leave your questions in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.